Hello, Jeffrey Martin here, director of the Center for the Study of Non-Symbolic Consciousness and a research professor and director of the Transformative Technology Lab at Sophia University in Silicon Valley, where we research how seekers can become finders and finders can become explorers so that you live your most powerful and purposeful life. I get asked all the time about meditation and whether or not people are wasting their time with meditation. I think there's a sense that meditation is often very, very hard for people. And of course, it's kind of like dieting in a sense, right? Where someone tries a diet for a little bit of time and they're like, eh, you know, the benefits just don't outweigh the pain. I really want that chocolate cake. Um, in fact, I really want a lot of that chocolate cake. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and, and pass on this diet thing and go back and have my chocolate cake. Same thing happens with meditation. People sit down and they think they have to quiet their mind and so they sit there and they're like, okay, quiet, quiet, no, no, quiet, stop it. Stop, stop it, stop, quiet, quiet, right? Uh, and it becomes very frustrating for them and they're like, hold on, I don't wanna do this anymore. I've just, I'm, I'm a meditation failure, you know? I, I'm a diet failure, I can't stay on a diet, I'm a meditation failure, I just can't stay with meditation. Uh, so there's this sense, you know, is this even good for me? Well, you can search the internet for 10 seconds and discover that there's a zillion scientific studies out there telling you how amazing meditation is for you. So you don't need me to rattle off those benefits. You can find that super easy. And unless you've been, you know, I don't know, living in a cave with no internet access and no media access for a while, chances are you've heard some of that just from being out in the world. I mean, you see it on billboards for advertisements these days. You see it on the news. You see it just everywhere. So you know for a fact that meditation is good for you. That's not really what you're asking. When you're asking me the question is, well, is, is this meditation stuff, is this really good for me? What you're really asking is, how do I do this in a way that I don't find frustrating? So let me give you a little secret about this. It's actually not necessarily about quieting your mind. And you probably don't want to be thinking, okay, quiet, quiet, quiet. <laughs> right? And the reason for that is because you've got a couple of networks in your brain, big networks in your brain. And what I mean by that are different areas that are connected together and that often seem to have activity in them at the same time or nearly the same time. And so as a network of areas in your brain activates, um, other networks often deactivate. And there's a couple of big networks that have been found in recent years uh, that have a rhythm that seems to flow between them. One of those networks has been linked to self-referential thought. So guess what that means? There's a core rhythm in your brain that is just sort of naturally leading you back to having spontaneous thoughts arise, right? So your idea that you're actually just trying to stop your thought in meditation is actually an impossible idea, really, especially when you're first starting out. Now, I'm not saying over time you can't train it. Right, you want to really put in some time, really sink in some years, sure, you can change that rhythm a little bit. But spontaneous thoughts are just one of those things that happen in most people's brains. And it's, there's, this, there's a well-established rhythm and whatnot in the brain that relates to this. And so your notion that you should be able to quiet your mind is under no circumstances the benchmark that you should be using to determine whether or not you're having success with meditation. So that's the first thing. I'll stick a pin in that for a minute and let me come back around to another notion. A second notion is that in our research, we've seen that people very often have a preference for meditation. In other words, just like you might prefer coffee over chocolate, or you might prefer tea over coffee or whatever else, right? You have certain preferences in your life. Uh, there are things that you don't really like as much and there are things that you really like. Guess what? The same thing is probably true for you with meditation. And so what this means is you don't want to think about all meditation being equal. All meditation is not the same. You need to find the type of meditation that works for you just like you need to find the type of diet that works for you, right? So if you're trying to lose weight, you don't just go in and think to yourself, okay, well, let's see. I'm gonna try the Mediterranean diet. And if that doesn't work, I'm never, ever, ever gonna try another diet. Of course you're gonna try other diets, right? 
That's exactly the way you need to think about meditation. So you need to find the method that works best for you. There's all kinds of great methods out there that you can explore. And really, in our research, we found that you know pretty quickly. You don't have to practice it for two years to figure out whether or not a meditation is good for you or not. Right? So if you try a meditation and you really, really give it a try, and I mean for you know 25 minutes, 20, 25 minutes, 30 minutes, something like that, for maybe just a few days in a row, after that, you'll have a sense of really whether or not it's for you. Uh, and if you find it's frustrating, if you find that it's not relaxing you, um, or maybe you're doing it for focus, if you find that it's not focusing you. Whatever meditation you've picked for whatever thing you're trying to do, whether you're trying to get some more focus in your life, or whether you're trying to get some more peacefulness in your life, or whatever it is you're doing. If you find after a few days of trying a meditation that it's not doing it for you, guess what? Stop doing that meditation and move on to something else, right? This isn't the old days where there was only one form of meditation that was available to you and the people who were teaching it to you were swearing that it worked for everybody and that it was the best possible meditation on earth, right? You can search the internet, you can see all sorts of people loving all kinds of different meditation. Now let me also warn you, that thing, it's probably that meditation that works for you, probably it's also not necessarily appropriate for all of your friends, right? So after you spend a little time and you find this amazing meditation that works for you, people are often tempted to start telling all their friends about it and to expect all of their friends to love that meditation too. And of course, they need to match up to a meditation just like you had to match up to a meditation. And so do not be the pushy meditation person among your friends. Uh, it's much more important for you to communicate to your friends that they need to find the type of meditation that works for them, just like you found the type of meditation that works for you. So is meditation beneficial? Absolutely. Tons of scientific studies have proven that for, frankly, longer than I've been alive at this point, so for decades. And make sure that you search around enough to find one that really, really hits home with you so that you'll lock it in, You'll make it a regular practice and you'll get those benefits.